Yo, GMs, GMs. Let me know if anyone wants to come up and talk because it'll get a little lonely up here by myself. I don't know what's going on. Market's uh, not doing well for the cause, most people, I think. And uh, it's kind of sad to see, but I'll show up no matter what. I don't care. It's all good, man. Crazy news going on. Though. Just found out some crazy news. Someone I grew up with uh, literally got stabbed to death for no reason. The, the person that did it thought it was our neighbor. <laughs> Hey, man, that's why I moved out from where I'm from, because it's crazy. People are stupid. And then my father's like, it happens everywhere. I'm like, no, nah, no, dad, it doesn't happen everywhere. He always says that shit, it's crazy. Yeah, where I'm from, though, is not a good area. People are just idiots, man. They have, like, no respect. It's like the wild, wild west. It's a really bad area. And then I had my 20-year... Uh, high school reunion last weekend and everyone that was there i mean pretty much like i don't know i'd say 95 percent of the people there they don't even live in that area anymore it's just like there's nothing there man just trying to do better for yourself and the person that got stabbed is like a really good person it's just that like that's what happens where, I, where i'm from you do one wrong thing one wrong moment or whatever you know the dude literally answered his door and the guy started attacking him and he, and then to find out he thought it was a, his neighbor because he lived in a duplex. It's just like craziness to me. Stupid. I was just with his older brother like a, a couple of months ago at a, at a wedding. It's like crazy, man. I just got that news about 10 minutes, about 15 minutes ago. My brother called me, told me, I was like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, but open mic, man. Come up and talk. Tell me how you're doing. I don't care what you what you're up to. Let me know. Just get my day kind of started. Just could do a nice little mile and a half walk. Crushing some caffeine right now. About to go get another caffeine. Get get all nice and sweaty from having a lot of caffeine. You know what I mean? So yeah, but all is well though. I think the market. Let me see what the market's up to today. It's doing pretty good. I um, had a lot of anxiety because I recently deployed a lot of um, of my stable coins into the market. <laughs> and as soon as I did, some of it started nuking a little bit. But it looks like it's doing okay. Like I, I can tell you right now, the things that I bought. Oh, nice render. I was getting nervous because I bought I got I bought render at. I think it was like six dollars and sixty six. It was actually six six six, I think. And then it nuked down to, um, it nuked down to all, all the way down to like, man, like five ninety eight. Five ninety three. I was like, what the fuck? Like timing is the worst for me right now. And then uh, today it's up, back up to six eighty. I'm convinced on render. I mean, I don't know if you guys go to Vegas at all, but that big sphere is all because of render. Everything, those graphics and how cool and badass that is, it's all render. A lot of people don't know that, but render's pretty badass. Um, I'll, I'll tell you right now, while, while I'm here just like talking to myself, let me see. Coin Gecko. I um, bought... A good amount of Solana again. I loaded up at like 172, I think it was. I bought a lot of Ton. Ton, I'm kind of like even. I think I bought it about what it is right now. Um, I bought, what else did I buy? Render, obviously, I just said that. Bought some Whiff. Maker. The maker's like my my beta on uh, Ethereum, so I think Ethereum Ethereum's just boring, man. Like it's too boring for me. Like I own some ETH, but it's just boring. Like I don't know. I look at Bitcoin and Ethereum. Or Bitcoin and Ethereum is so boring. It's not enough action for me. It's too serious. You know, like I think it's all, both of those are fair plays that go up. Obviously, like if the market's going to go up, those two have to go up. It's just inevi inevitable. However, I think like a lot of things are just going to outperform it. So I'm here to make bigger gains. I'm not here to like, oh, you know, make a little. Because I always find that to be weird in this space. Like you'll get like these Bitcoin maxis 
like, oh, I only own Bitcoin. And then to me, like, I'm okay with that. But like, I, I don't like those people that sit there and say, oh, like, alts are for poors and stuff like that. Because they're the same people that they say that. And then they, you know, they only have, and this is no knock on anyone listening. They, they only have maybe like best case scenario, six figures into just Bitcoin only and nothing else. And it's like, okay, cool. Um, are you, is that going to be life changing money? Most likely never, you know, probably, probably never. Like, you know, I own Bitcoin. I, I don't think my, my stash of Bitcoin would ever give me straight up freedom forever without ever having to work again. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I mean, I have a decent amount of Bitcoin. I'm in the one plus BTC club, but I just, uh, I don't know because I think. Even if hypothetically it goes to where all these people think it's going to go to like a million plus and stuff like that. At that point, like, is a, is that million still worth like, you know, in the future? Is it really, is it really a million or is it like 65 to 100 K? Cause it's just how diluted the dollar gets, you know? So I don't know. I'm just blabbing, but I think like, um, so Don, man, it's open mic. So I'm going to invite you to come up to tell her, don't feel like you need to, but if you want to, just to keep me company. Um, all good either way. Anyhow, yeah, I was like, my, my Bitcoin thesis has always been this since day one that alts will outperform. No, not all alts, good alts, um, will outperform Bitcoin substantially. And then, um, even, even throw memes in there. Some of the beta memes on certain chains, um, will, will outperform Bitcoin by a la- landslide. And then when the bear market comes, bear, um, Bitcoin just follows, uh, equities. So it's like in that, in that situation, I just take the, take this, the portfolio and load up on stables and then just yield stables. You know, even if it's just yielding on Coinbase at 5.5% or whatever, or whatever it happens to be at the time, you know, it's like that'll probably outperform. And then you just load up. But there's, there's one play that I'm going to do and I'm, I'm not fighting anyone's bags, but. I'm highly convinced I was running the numbers and everything that Tia in the next bear market, like whenever that is, let's say the end of next year, beginning of 2026 or whatever, maybe by tax season of 2026, which would be people in America filing taxes for 2025. I'm convinced Tia is going to be like a dollar or under a dollar. And then I will, but I will be buying it because it'll probably be like the next cycle's big thing. And, um, it, it would be this time too, but there's just, it's just such high float, man. There's so many unlocks and the VCs are up so much. They're just going to dump, dude, and move on to the next thing. And they've been dumping their staking rewards and stuff like that too. So I just feel like you're fighting against gravity, trying to like convince yourself that T is going to go up. I mean, it might a little bit, but to me, there's so many clear winners. If you just study the market and when the market nukes, you see like which tokens nuke less, if that's a thing, you know, you just see what, the, what doesn't nuke as bad that are like, you know, the, the top alts. I'm talking about like top 50 max. Don't go below that. If you own stuff below that, then that's fine too. Cause I clearly do, but I don't really keep loading up on stuff like that. I, I'm, I feel like I'm good on my positions that are down below, you know, the minus hundreds and the two hundreds, three hundreds, et cetera. But, um, yeah, I, uh, my thesis is to, that that's kind of it. What's up, John? Oh, first of all, sorry about that. Man, that really sucks. Uh, my condolences. Nah, man, it's all good, bro. It's, it's just like, it's sad because I, I, it's just like, it's inevitable. Like I'm talking about, you want to talk about just the wild, wild west, bro. Anytime you go there, I don't even like to go visit my parents because every time I go there, I just feel like, uh, like I'm proud to be from where I'm from, but it's just, you just feel this like irkiness to yourself. You're like, man, shit's about to pop off at any moment, you know, like grown adults at any time of the year. It doesn't matter what time of the year, sweatpants and, and, uh, and, uh, what you would call it? Not sandals, but what's the freaking thing? Slippers, like, and, and, and dirty beaters on and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just don't want a part of that with their ass hanging out and stuff. It's just like, I don't want a part of that. I actually understand. I'm from an area pretty close to that. <laughs> no, nah, dude, it's crazy, bro. Like, this isn't the first time this has happened, too. Like, 
I got in a fight one time there because someone thought I was someone else. Because people just do drugs and they just like, I don't know what what they are. Like, they're just like, I 100% guarantee this guy was on drugs. Supposedly, he like knocked real hard on the door. And and my my buddy Vinny is a big dude. Like, he's he trains and he's a gritty dude. And I don't know, he's, the other guy just like started stabbing him for no reason. Like, literally just started stabbing him for le- legit no reason. Because he thought that the, he was his neighbor. Cause he lived in the same duplex or whatever. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And then supposedly like the, the, you know, the, the police came and they had a canine and he even stabbed a canine dog. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. The dude was probably on like PCP or crystal math or who knows. <laughs> People are goofy, man. Yeah. Still, dude. Nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. It, it's wild. Cause his older brother, I played, bo- I played ball with both of them. He, the dude that got stabbed to death, he was a year younger than me. And then his older brother was, two years older than me and I was good friends with both of them. I was just, I was just with his older brother back in the, the, in the winter time. Yeah, it was the winter because my, my, my cousin got, my older cousin got married and we're all good friends. So we're at the wedding together and I was like, Hey, how's your brother doing? And he's like, oh, he's doing real good. He like just works all the time and he runs a lot and he trains and stuff. I was like, Oh, that's good. And, uh, he lived in the same exact name. Well, he didn't grow up in the same neighborhood, but where the stabbing happened is it was literally in my neighborhood. It's just, and then my my dad, my my father's like it happens everywhere. I'm like, no, it doesn't, dude. Like it doesn't happen everywhere. It's like it's it happens in goofball areas, you know. It's just people are goofy, bro. I'm good. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, I, I I literally I got to the point where it's a it's a good drive for me anyways. It's about an hour drive from where I live at now, so I only go back if I have to, you know, like the holiday. Like I, I go I go for Chris like Christmas Eve, and then maybe once or twice throughout the year randomly. But usually I just if I want to meet my parents, I just say like, hey, let's meet like halfway somewhere or meet down in the city or whatever, because it's just there's nothing around there too. That's the problem. Like there's literally nothing around there. You have to drive about a half hour to go to like good stuff or maybe not a half hour, but 20, 25 minutes to like actually go where there's a lot of like activity to do and fun stuff to do. So there's just like nothing there. It's an old still town uh, city. It was one of the biggest towns in, uh, in PA back in the day. Cause there was like a lot of work and stuff. And then when the steel mills closed down, it just became a shithole over like over time. That's how it works, man. When it's a company town, once company leaves, it's over. <laughs> yeah. It, it's bad, man. Like, there's a lot of good people from there, you know, like you learn about life where I'm from, dude. Like you just got to put up with like dickheads and assholes like your whole life. Even as a kid, even as a child, you have to like know when to pick your battles and when not to. And yeah, dude, I got the fuck out of there as soon as I could. Even when I went to college, like I could have went to some schools. I had scholarships by, by schools close to like Pit and stuff like that. And I was like, nah, man, I'm going way eight hours away at least. I end up going into, you know, to Connecticut and just a different mentality, different lifestyle. So yeah, time for a change. Yeah, I get you. yeah, man. <laughs> but now it's like, yeah, dude, it's, it's sad, man. You want like, and you know, not the to get BCs, political or anything. Yeah. Not to get political or anything. It's just like just bad policies, right? Like something has to give, like if the shit doesn't get any better, you, you got to start at the top. Like why is stuff not getting better? You know, maybe make, better policies or crack down on crime or whatever. You know what I mean? It's crazy, bro. It's like, it's like the same cycle. And and, and it, it's, it's just sad, man. How many people are just lost, bro. Like, and, and so many of these people that do stuff like this, people in other countries would love to have that same opportunity and they would be so grateful for everything they have and not how these people are, you know, it's just like they're, they're they, they want everything, but don't want to work for it. That's kind of like where I'm from. It's like, they all want shit, Christmas time, they're going to break into everyone's cars and try to steal their shit. It's just like, yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> Anyways, what you up to? Um, I'm, I just took a little vacation up in Santa Cruz right now, so it's pretty nice. <laughs> nice. How long are you up there for the weekend? Just, just two days. Nice. Yeah. I'm- Get away from town. From the work. <laughs> See some friends. Nice. Yeah, here you did. I'm ready to take another trip. I was going to go down to uh, Nashville for Bitcoin, Bitcoin in Naf- Nashville, and I ended up going. I was just like, eh. Not today. <laughs> you know, it'll be there again. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. So what what have you been interested in in the markets at all? Like anything? I really like flicks because it's been pretty stable as far as I'm concerned between 13 and 15 cents. Plus the APR is now 50%. It's not bad. Yeah. I need to, I need to look into flicks more. I like Cisla. I was just talking to Cisla the other day. I, I, I own like a tiny amount of it. Yeah. I think that's kind of my play on, on Cosmo stuff is, it needs to be either AI based or AI, like AI focused or, you know, the whole little acronyms that they all people came up with over time, like Deepin and, um, RWAs, stuff like that. And, and the only, the only one that's, I'm kind of not, well, there's a couple. I still am long on, I know like Osmo has been the performance of the price hasn't been too good, but I'm still convinced on it because I think over time it's just going to be not only, the the financial hub of IBC, but I think it, it'll start to get more assets outside of IBC as all this different in, infrastructure keeps improving. And I don't know anyone that ever uses osmosis and is like, oh, os- os- it's not a good place to you know check out or go degen on and stuff like that. So I think I'm still long on that. I'm still long on uh, injective, you know, rye. Um, I still have a bag of Kuji. I haven't bought any more. I was expecting it to to dip under a dollar and i and I will load let me let's see what it's at right now oh it is it's it's under a dollar right now so oh yeah the this is my key lines for for like this is how i will look at kajira and um i'll look at it kind of like i look at a lot of things once it gets down hopefully it doesn't but maybe it will if it goes down under like 75 cents i'll buy a big bag of it and then that'll be it. And that'll be it. I'll never buy it again. I'll just keep it. And it's either going to zero or, you know, it's just a great buy over time. Yeah, I'll stake it. No problem with that. And if it if it goes okay, that I get it, you know? Yep. So that's what I'll do with Kajira. Uh let me look at everything else. But right now I'm just not trying to lose money. And I think there's clear winners in the space. Like I think obviously Bitcoin Ethereum, if you're just trying to make a little bit of money, maybe like a one multiplier ish well with with all this stuff for bitcoin staking i think it's gonna rise up a little you know oh yeah you got the uh, like you got uh babylon you got the etfs i mean all this stuff is might be performance but like i told my buddy back in 2020 bitcoin hit around five thousand because of the world problem or the pandemic <laughs> yeah i mean um yeah, I mean Bitcoin. I'm I'm really bullish on Babylon, and there's this other other chain that's coming out. It's called Million. It's being worked on right now. It's like a privacy focus, but a lot of people I talked to behind the scenes because it was like a fair launch, just not high flow. And um, so I'll be I'll be getting into that. But yeah, I think um, like for me, the only things I'm really thrown looking into for the most part is uh, Solana, Ton. I think those are two clear winners this market. You know, um, and I know some people aren't big meme people, but memes always outperform like the the good memes, like the ones that are top notch, not just like some random. I mean, you can get lucky and hit lightning in a bottle. And I try to do this sometimes. I'll, I'll throw a little bit at some random meme coin and I don't, I don't suggest doing it to anyone out there. Like I'm definitely not suggesting that, but I will every once in a while just have a little fun and just be a little bit of a DJ. But I think like Pepe. Like if you're like bullish on Ethereum, right? You're like, oh, ETH, ETH or whatever. Then to me, if you want to outperform ETH, and it's probably a guarantee. No, again, can't can't take it to the grave. But I think uh, <laughs> Pepe Pepe outperformed Ethereum. So if you're like real long on ETH, you're like ETH's gonna do go up to 10k. Well, then me personally, I'm just loading up on Pepe. Um, Render is a winner. It's a clear winner. Like it's so obvious it's a winner that. It's just too obvious sometimes. It's a clear winner. Um, that's one in particular. Let me see what else I got here. Do-do-do. But I'm trying to stick to like the top 50 right now because the markets has been real goofy. The other, the other one that I think is a clear winner is, uh, Falcoin, Maker, Whiff. I think those are all like Whiff is a clear winner. Like everyone, because when new people come into this space, now I've talked to so many new people and, and that's, and just in general, you ask them like, what do they own in crypto? They always gravitate to meme coins. Like last cycle was Dogecoin. Like I had this dude come over to my house 
Cause I had, <laughs> I had all these yellow jacket problems. Cause like where I live, that's always real sunny. I live like on top of this mountain. So it's always sunny. It could be like 10 o'clock at night and there's sun as long as the sun's up and it's not raining or whatever, but like it's always sunny and I always have yellow jacket problems every single year somewhere in on my house or they try to get in my house or underground or whatever. Yellow jackets will just, they always post up, dude. They love my house. It's ridiculous. Anyhow, one year we went away. My wife and I went away for a couple of weeks. I came back, dude. I came back. There was literally, I don't want to say a lot of them, but there was yellow jackets in my house. I was like, Oh shit. So I called, yeah, you were, <laughs> yeah, dude, I was, I was screwed. So I called a, called a B guy comes over. He's like this over, like overweight guy. Uh, and he's my age, like I'm 38 and he was like my age. And I was like, yeah, we know we're bullshit about stuff. He seemed real cool. We we're just talking about dumb shit. And then I always try to turn the conversation into crypto. And I was like, Hey man, you own any crypto? And he was like, yeah. He's like, man, I've been loading up on Dogecoin. Like that's all he said. He was like, I've been loading up on Dogecoin. This is like, this is back in like 2021 or something like that. I was like, okay, man, cool. Or 2022. I was like, all right, cool, man. Like, but you know, I go to a lot of um, sport, you know, I go to like a lot of games, like pirate games, dealer games, penguin games. And I'm always like just chilling, talking to people about sports and shit. And cause I used to play ball and, uh, and I, I always, like I said, I always get in crypto somehow and I'll just generally fill people out. Like, hey man, you own any crypto? <laughs> and, they'll put, and every single time it's like, I must have guaranteed, yep. like they might throw like, oh yeah, I own some Bitcoin, but they always, every one of them, even if they say, they say they own Bitcoin, they always throw in a random meme coin. They're like, I own the Shiba Inu. Like, <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's what I mean. Like meme coins are, it, you know, if you have that mentality, like they're stupid, then, you know, you probably don't, you, you probably don't want to make money because they're just, you know, I, I miss, I miss the, uh, Shiba. My buddy was one of my coworkers. He's like, dude, you got, Shiba, you gotta get into Shiba in you. You gotta do this. I'm like, you know what? You, you, I'll watch you. And if you win, I, I'll just say, I'm sorry, you were right. So I end up calling him up saying, Hey man, you were right. Okay. He's like, yeah, but I sold way before then. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the thing about the, the meme coins that people do. But like, you know, like a lot of people think, you know, right now you'll look and you'll say, okay, with, right? Like I'm going to click on with right now. And it's and people go like how you're saying I missed the boat. Like technically you did, but what are you looking for in a space? I mean, I would not be surprised. Like if we get a bull market, like I anticipate we eventually do, you know, I would not be surprised if, you know, with goes from like a $2.5 billion market cap to like 15, you know, like, it, it, you know, it wouldn't surprise me ish. And it's like, that's a, pretty good day at the office like i don't know you know it, i anticipate solana just to probably have at least three and a half four percent maybe even close to five percent of the total market cap of all of crypto if we get this run that i you know if, hopefully we do and maybe that's just opium but eventually we do i just feel like that, that that's going to eat into the market and most likely whiff will probably even outperform um solana so it's just a beta on it. Like people want meme coins. It's just like you can look back at all the cycles. Meme coins always outperform shit. And it's just like I'm not like I said, I'm not saying, oh, go thumb all your money into it. But I personally what I like to do is go for the ones that are clear. They're clearly there. They're clear winners. You know, like Whiff is a clear winner. Pepe is a clear winner. Mog is a clear winner. There's a few of them. Even if you want to start to dabble into the smaller ones that are maybe like in a hundred, like mid, like say a hundred, hundred fifty million dollar market cap. There's a few of those too. Like I think that uh retardio one is a, probably a good one. There's lock in. There's uh there's so many of them, dude, but like on a serious note for like actual real crypto that, you know, brings utility so to speak, with actual use cases, you know, like Helium, HNT is a clear winner. That's a top 100 asset. That's another one that I'm looking into. You know, I think that they're clear winners. Render's a clear winner. Like I, I've said it numerous times already. Render's a clear winner. And go go to Vegas and look at that spear. It's all Render. So, I mean, that's a clear, clear, clear winner. I mean, shit, dude. That, Until I hit it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no man. Um what else what else Cosmos are you interested in? Anything? All right. Um no, I still like Os Osmosis, even though they had that drama with sale. Yeah, there's always drama. It's all good there. Yeah, 
I don't see a point to it. I mean, I would have just left Sale alone personally because it's already been given. They're not hurting anyone. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm like I said, I own a bunch of different stuff, but I haven't been. I just been compounding and just forgetting about it for the most part. The ones like I'm, I'm going for, like just the top ones. I'm just tr- trying not to lose any money right now at all. Like just like I always say. That- I'm oh, sorry. I always say it's backwards. D Y is it D Y X D or D Y D Y D X? Yeah. I like them because they'll pay out in stablecoin, and then if I need to collect, I can collect in stablecoin. So that's pretty cool to me. Yeah, like I like that. That's how more models should be, man. They should just be more. You you stake whatever it is, and you earn actual stablecoins from like the revenues from the shit, like the, whatever it is, you know, whether it's just the trading fees or whatever the fee structure is. But uh, personally, I hope. I really hope Bit- the Bitcoin staking goes that way because I'd rather have a stable coin than more Bitcoin, you know? That's just me, though. Yeah, that's one thing that I'm going to be getting into is when Babylon, they're going to be doing like three phases, I think it is, where you put up your Bitcoin and then you'll, you'll probably earn about 20% or so. Like I randomly just was looking at the numbers. I was like, yeah, it's probably that's- probably about 20% yield because you're getting paid for the risk, right? It's like you got to it's got to be worth it for people to want to that- take their Bitcoin for really- it. Twenty percent is really good, mm-hmm. especially for Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, I, I, you know, Doctor Shays, he's one of the smartest human beings probably on planet Earth. So I'm convinced that Babylon's good stuff. I mean, I, I interviewed him. I think I did the second second interview ever with him. The first one was Don Kryptonian, but it was like right afterwards. This was a long time ago. I think it was back in man, maybe beginning of 2022. And he was the only guest that I ever spoke to that I was like, oh man, like. I don't want to say I was intimidated, but it was like a different, it was a different vibe, you know, like the dude, the dude pioneered wireless communications, you know, it was pretty cool that he was like, just randomly talking to me, like, fuck it. <laughs> definitely overwhelmed, like, whoa, dude, you're talking to me? <laughs> yeah, he has his own wing at Stanford, like literally has his own wing. Like, he's, he's the man, dude. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm bullish on Babylon for real. Because I think one of the problems, it's going to be better. And it's one of the reasons I, you know, I think we get a bull run anyways, is that, you know, how, how legitimized Bitcoin is that people eventually are going to be able to take it. And even if they wanted to take it to their bank or certain, certain bank or institutions and use it as collateral to borrow against it, eventually that's going to happen. And it, obviously that's kind of a thing in this space, but with Babylon doing that, it, with the sh- infrastructure and all that, I think some people are going to tap into it because it's not sustainable to have this model where you're just like, oh yeah, this price is just going to keep going up by itself. Like st- stuff like that will actually increase the value of Bitcoin because everyone borrows against their their assets, or at least smart people do. You know, you're, I mean, I, I was, again, none of this financial advice, but you're kind of a moron if you own like a property and it was worth like 300K or whatever it's worth, doesn't matter. And it, you don't have any debt on it, like any, like you're not barring against it. It's like, what are you doing? Like you're kind of a, to me, you're kind of an idiot because it's like, you don't need to, you don't need to leverage the shit out of it, but like 10, 15% or whatever, you know. So yeah, that's, that's, that's payable. You can pay that back, you know, if don't go, don't go ham on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't put the whole 300. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, why do people never sell their properties in you know, like New York or whatever? Because it always goes up in value over time and they just borrow against it. And for real, you can live off it the rest of your life. Why, if you go to New York, you'll see vacant buildings. Why, why are they vacant? Because it's probably some mobster in like Russia and he, yeah. he's cleaning his money up. <laughs> Fuck it. He's like, I'm, I'm borrowing against my collateral. <laughs> and then he's using that money. And- <laughs> and the New York property is insane. <laughs> yeah, and generally when you borrow against stuff, it's not taxable, you know. So it's like, whatever. That's what they do. I mean, not yet. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll it'll never be. It'll it'll never be because the 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 economy is only ran off of debt. If you get rid of debt, then everything crumbles and breaks. It'll break instantly. It'll literally break overnight, and then it's just it's never going to happen because there's multiple reasons why. One, the donors will never, ever, ever, ever give money to any politician if they ever really push for that. Like, they'll just never get money, you know? Um, there's a reason why they select who they want to select, right? Why Why do you think oh, yeah. Biden's out? And we all knew this. Like, we all knew this. I mean, Trump even knew. Trump was saying it like seven I, months ago. There's no way that Biden's actually going to make it to, to the election. Like, I, no way. I thought Biden was going to pass away. I was so worried about the guy. <laughs> 
Yeah, and they they they'll install someone, right? Like they're not going to install like Bernie Sanders or something. Like people, no. you know, liberal. No. Yeah, they're not going to install RFK. You know, they fucked him over hard because he's not a big corporate guy. You know, it's just not a he's not really for the elitists for the most part. So they they ran they screwed him over. They wouldn't even let him go against Biden. You know. So he's like, ah, screw it. I'll just run as an independent. But yeah, it's just the way it is, dude. Like they're not ever going to get rid of debt because that's just the way the economy, that's just how economies work. You have to have debt. You have to have people borrowing and, and doing that because there's no, there'd be no point for anything. So you need, yeah. Yeah, man. But no, seriously though, like that'll probably open up a lot of opportunities and people will, because will, essentially then for the most part, if you're a firm believer, then you won't have to sell your Bitcoin ever. You can just borrow against it and just hope that it always outperforms everything over time. And maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Like I said, my f- f- early thesis is like the good alts, like the the good alts are always going to outperform Bitcoin, at least for the time being. And then in the, in the bear market, the uh, stable coins will outperform Bitcoin because it just follows equities anyway. So, you know. That's kind of how I view the how I view the space, but you can also get wrecked real hard too. Like last last cycle, you know, got wrecked because of UST, just wrecked. And I was <laughs> and I wasn't even degening really on Terra. Like I was just like, oh yeah, you know, being this bit crypto maxi where I'm like, I'm just gonna hold these stables and farm up and you know just wait and buy things when they dip hard, which they did, but. You know, I was just in the wrong stable. You know, it could have been in other ones. But at the time, we that's all that's all uh, Cosmos had was UST, and they had that Eora. But who the fuck had Eora? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't I don't drink tea, right? Like, well, I do sometimes, but I don't. I, I'm not a tea big tea guy. It's like <laughs> <laughs> anyone's it's welcome up, man. It's just open mic. We're just shooting the shit, so. Well, when I first started crypto, I got with Algorand, and it was real promising, and then it slowly sank. So <laughs> I moved over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. They're still around, though. You got, like, Stellar's, like, top. It's, like, 34 right now, market cap. And then, you know, you ever buy something because people are just so convinced about something, even if you're not convinced? <laughs> that's how That's how I, I kind of am with XRP. I was like, all right, I'm going to buy, and I haven't sold it. But I was like, I'm not buying anymore. But if all these lunatics are kind of right and somehow they're right, like, I don't know how they're right, but I'm just like, you know what? I don't care if I lose this position. I'm just going to buy a little bit of XRP. So if it does go to these crazy ass numbers that people are predicting, then I just don't miss the boat. But I'm not like convinced. So like, I don't encourage that at all. That's only if you have fun money to just fuck around with. Yeah. You know, if you, if you can afford to lose it and don't worry about it, you're doing good, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a uh, coin, and I hope I mean I'm not encouraging, but I've talked to so many people that know the tech inside and out, and um, they know like the tokenomics, they know builders, and one one that a lot of people that I talk to that are convinced is just like just nothing but vapor is uh is Tau, and that's uh you know BitTensor, which is 38th right now. All right. Yeah, because no one's building on it. Yeah, they're just talking about it. Yeah, no one's building on Tau at all. No one. And it costs like, the subnets cost like a million dollars, I think, ish around there to, to actually use it. So, <clears throat> like, what's the point, bro? Like, I don't know. Like, who the fuck wants to do that? If you have that type of, you know, dinero, you can just start your own shit up. Oh, easily. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, what the hell? Yeah, man. So I know you're, in, um, I'm in the casino industry. So I see people, more people lose money than crypto. <laughs> yeah, man. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, I used to uh yeah. I used to be a big gambler, man. Like um so from when I graduated college, there was like no job. So it was either I was overqualified or underqualified and, and I was or just like the only work I really wanted to get that was actually paying and worth my time at the time was uh like physical labor work. But I was like really good at poker. I, I read every book and I used to play a lot. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let me just go and treat it like a job. And I did that for, uh, man, about four years. I would just go every month, generally every month to Vegas for about seven to 10 days. And I would just go out there and grind, grind, uh, um, cash games. Like I rarely played 
uh, tournaments because it was more luck based because it's more the blinds go up. There's time structures, a lot of pre flop yeah. bullshit. People think ace kings the nuts and they go all in pre flop and all that dumb shit. But they don't. You don't really do that in cash games because you'll just get picked off. And ace king is dick. It's nothing pre flop in cash games. If you want to get wrecked, then yeah, keep doing that. You'll just give money to everyone. But anyhow, I got really good. I took it super serious. Like I, I tracked everything. I read everything. I took you know wrote, wrote shit down. I improved and what what I can work on and you know it was it was good man I did that and um then I, it, then towards my end I just kind of was getting burned out I was playing so much I was probably playing like 50 60 hours minimum a week and then um it was just not having fun anymore and I, then I started <laughs> then I started going out and being a degenerate on the craps tables man like I hit one time real big and it just kind of ruined me after that so yeah I'm like, you hit once and that's the end of it it's like I can do it again yeah dude there was this lady I just had this weird feel I was like bro she's gonna go on a heater and this is one of my first times playing craps like I wouldn't say first but I, I mean I knew all the insides and outs of the game and stuff like that and um I was on a real good run myself shooting and I was hitting everything, dude. Like I was hitting hard, hard, everything hard too, like hard fours, hard, you know, and I was betting a little bit on it. And um anyways, so I had like a decent stack for my own role. And then there was this lady, I don't know why I was like, she's about to, she's about to kill it. So I just loaded up on everything, just loaded. And I just kept, I just kept pressing everything, dude, everything. And I had like, I don't know, orange chips. So there was like, you know, whatever they are, three. Th yeah, those are good, good gem down there, you know? Yeah. I mean, I have one time, dude, there was, I had 10 Ks like just sitting on the outside numbers and this lady kept smacking fours and tens and shit, dude. It was crazy, bro. And, uh, yeah, those are nice spots, though, you know? yeah. I remember coming home. I was like, holy fuck, that was fun. Like, that was so crazy. It happened so <laughs> fast too, dude. So, I mean, my biggest horror story at the casino was seeing one guy, he went to the high limit area, made a spin, accidentally bet 90 bucks and walked out with 60 K. Went for cool. Yeah. And he kept, kept going for three days. He ended up accumulating three million bucks. Damn, dude. And on that fourth day, you can guess what happened. All of it went back. Yeah. And I'm like, please don't hurt yourself in the hotel, in the hotel. Please don't go home and end it. Yeah. See, I never got that bad. I would always like if, if I hit big, I would always go home, but like it was just more of the edge. And like I still was up money at the end of the day or like at the end of this trip, but I started to not even want to play poker anymore and just play like, you know, play the table games. And then that's when I knew I needed to stop because it was just like, dude, there's just so much action. Right. And, um, oh, yeah. cause like generally when I would play poker, you know, I played a lot of hands, but I didn't play like a moron. I wasn't just playing like an idiot. You know, I was playing the numbers. I knew all the math. So if you wanted to chase a draw and I knew I had you beat, then I was making you pay for it. And I, I know sometimes you're going to get lucky <laughs> and you're going to hit. And the only times I would chase draws, if there was more, the expected value, if I hit was worth it because there's more people in the pot and the money's right and stuff like that. But so I was really good at it, but like I said, I, I got to the point where I didn't want to play anymore, and I just wanted to gamble out in the, in the table games. And I was like, "That's when I knew I was like, I got to stop." And then uh, I did, so it was good. I, I like I said, I had a really good run at it. I had a lot of fun, and I still play every once in a while. But um, no, like my, the craziest. And this is no lie. This is one of my very first times ever at the casino. So I went to school in Connecticut. My cousin and my uncle were coming up to visit me. And I just turned 21. Like it was probably uh, my birthday's in March. I think they came up in April, maybe if I recall. And this was a long time ago. I'm getting old, but, um, Don't worry. yeah. So I have, <laughs> I have a, this is funny. I have a Dodge Neon at the time. Like I thought I was the coolest thing ever because I just got this Dodge Neon and, uh, I'm driving to Mohegan Sun in, in um, up in Connecticut. It was about an hour drive from where I lived at. And we stopped at this random gas station right outside of it. And um, I'm just bullshit with my uncle, like not even paying attention to the pump. And it just clicks perfectly on 30. No prepay or anything. Just clicks. It's 3000. Zero, zero, zero. So like that catches my mind because it's just kind of random, right? So then we're in Mohegan Sun. It's kind of one of those Indian casinos, real cool chill vibes and shit. And we're, 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 we go to the bar. I think I drank like a, I forget what kind of whiskey concoction. Maybe back in the day because I was younger, I was probably like a Jack and Coke or something. Um, but yeah, we're drinking a little bit and this one at random roulette machine, like hits my right side of my like peripherals. I walk over there with confidence, like with confidence to, and at the time, I think I only took about $300 to the casino. 
maybe that's smart. about 300 that's or so. Smart. So I roll up there and I put a hundred dollars down on 30. That's literally the only thing I bet. And I told my cousin and my uncle to throw money on it. They, they might've threw like 20 bucks or something on it. Right. Dude, it rolls back. 30 right off the right off the bat dude so i got 3500 bucks just like that right this 21 year old right so then i'm like this is the this is the same year that uh the steelers just beat the cardinals yeah they just beat the yeah they just beat the cardinals in the super bowl i think yeah, they just beat the Cardinals in the Super Bowl. And I was a big Ben fan. I was a big uh, Roberto Clemente fan, which his number was 21. Big Jerome Bettis fan, um, 36. So I just, I play all those numbers. And my, my number in college when I played ball was 22. Dude, the very next spin, and I, and I kept the 100 on, on 30. And then I just started throwing hundreds on like all those numbers. Dude, the very next spin, it was fucking goes seven. And that's, that's big. That was big Ben's number, dude. So that smacks, and then, right? I'm getting crushed because I'm up, I'm seven K just like that. Literally like seven K in like three minutes, like three minutes or four minutes. I don't know how long it took. It was crazy. So I've got seven K already. And then the next spin, dude, no, dude, all my numbers hit him as all in a row, dude. It was fucking crazy. There's this old black guy there. And he was like, he's like, son, he's like, I'd quit if I were you. I was like, I've never seen anything like this. I hit four numbers, all hundred dollars a piece. And then I took that. I went over to crafts and was on a run. I forget how much I ended up. I, I, dude, I, I won so much. I remember I took all the guys that I was, we met some random college buddies and shit there too. We went to Michael Jordan steakhouse and fucking got whatever. I told everyone, like, whatever you want. And yeah, I spent, I spent, I spent a good amount there, but dude, I took that and, um, I went to, I went to like Miami a couple times. I went to Puerto Rico. I went all over the place just because of that one run. So it was like, it was one of the greatest things I ever, it'll never happen again in my lifetime. Like something like that. I'll never get this feel or I'll never get that. Like, Oh, this shit's going to win. Like I just knew it was going to win. Like even when they were coming up to come visit me in Connecticut, I just knew I was going to win. Like I had this weird feel all week. I was like, I'm going to win. I, I just like put it into like existence and I, and I That's did. Good. <laughs> you up out of existence by now by saying it'll never happen again. So shame on you. <laughs> well, yeah, but like that weird feel that I just know. Like I, I would get that sometimes in poker too. Like I just knew I was going to be on a run this day. Like run so good. Like one of those days where you look down and, and you're just getting everything and you're hitting everything. It just you know you chase some random hand. You know, like one of the biggest poker hands I ever won. I was I was at Venetian and I was playing five ten. Which like you could buy in for about, I think you could buy in for, they were allowing buy-ins for like 2k or 2500 or something like that. But I was playing forever. I was, I was there and I, I would go to Vegas sometimes. I'm not kidding you. Like they would allow you about an hour or so to go up to the room and if you wanted to come back and they would still hold your chips. That's and, cool. Yeah. So sometimes I would be, I would play 36. I, I think the high, longest I ever played was about 70 hours without, without stopping. Like I would go up to the room and shower and like take some caffeine and shit, but like I would just sit there all fucking for three days straight basically. And, uh, there I got, it was, I got two, five, three hands in a row. And I was at the time I was up so much. Like I had, I don't know, I don't know, probably 15 or at least 15 K or so. And there was this old Asian guy. He was a really good player, but he was real tight. So he was like kind of easy to find his hand ranges of what he would have in particular situations. But I was on the button. So anyone that doesn't know, it's like the dealer button. So you get to act last. And it was a third hand in a row. And at the time, I was just folding everything. And I got th two, five, three hands in a row. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to act like this is a big hand. And someone like early position. And the table was kind of super aggressive. So it was like a good table to be at. There's a lot of action. So someone early raised to like 30 bucks. And then so someone, like two people called. And then I made it like one. I think I made it like 130, which is two, five offsuit. And then the, the old guy, he's this old Asian guy. He's in the small blind for five bucks. So like for him to just flat call, which this is the ter worst play of all time for him just to randomly flat. Basically he's, he's only invested for $5 and he just flats and he has like, he has almost as, the same amount as I have. He's, he's probably got about 13 K or so in front of him. So he just flats, which is, it's, it's an idiotic play. Like you never just flat in a situation. Like you, unless you got some bullshit in like a small pocket pair or something, maybe do it, but he just flats 
So, like, I already know how he plays. Like, he has to have fucking a monster. Like, he has aces, kings, queens. Maybe he does it with ace-king, but I think he re-raises with ace-king. So, I already know his hands. Like, I already know what the fuck the guy has. And then the flop, dude, and, 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 and all those people that had the 30 bucks in or whatever, they all called. So, it was, like, four ways or something like that. And, dude, the flop comes, and I flopped the nuts. It was uh, it, no ace. It was – so, if I had two five, it was it – was, it was uh what the fuck it would have been three four six i think it was and mm-hmm. that hand it and that hand is the nuts like you, i think someone could have had a higher straight but there's no fucking way that someone had a higher straight so I, I flopped the nuts it's a rainbow board there's no flush draws or anything and um the first the, the the fucking old asian guy he just he just basically bets out like pot or whatever and then one idiot calls like some idiot calls and then the other one dude fall, folds and the other one calls and i'm just looking at my fucking hand like i I sat there for like 10 minutes not even 10 minutes i'm exaggerating but i'm just like looking at my cards and i'm like dude do i really have what i think i have like i'm just to make sure you know so i sit there and i'm just like thinking exactly i'm looking at every i'm looking at everyone's um how much chips they all have because i'm like i just want everyone's chips right now that's exactly mm-hmm. what i'm thinking and um yeah, poker's kind of predatorial, but anyways, oh, yeah. you know, I already know kind of like everyone's stash. Like a couple of people, I know they're gonna not gonna fold no matter what, because like their their pot, their hands, they gotta go with it, because like they don't have that much left. Like maybe like a thousand bucks or something, and uh, so they're committed. And I'm just like, I just called because I'm like, there's no card on the turn that's basically gonna beat me. If the board pairs and someone has and flopped a flopped a fucking set, good for them. They they're just gonna get my money. They're doubling up or whatever. So the turn was like a king. And it was like, you know, backdoor flush draw or whatever, but there's no one having that. So anyways, the dude the old guy, he he put he bets he bets like another I don't know, he bets like he bets like a thousand or two thousand bucks and then i had to i had to basically push them all in he wasn't gonna fold but i didn't i didn't even push them all in so all these other guys there's two other people they go all in but that doesn't matter it's like what the bet was maybe a little bit more and then uh it comes to me and then i just raise a little bit to see what he would Mm -hmm. do like i basically he bet like three i can't remember it's so long ago three or four k and then i'm just like or no he bet three k i was like seven and then he's like i'm all in and i'm like i call and i was like you're basically running dead and he flips over aces and i'm just like fuck you dude you're gonna mad i flip it over and he's like there's no way he spikes his cards and then he fucking he he like had like a drink like he i don't know what he was drinking on he spikes his drink and he's all pissed off and shit i just took his money dude and like (laughs) <laughs> he was so, like he's like how the fuck you have that he was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, i was like i don't know man just just had a weird feeling he was so yeah. mad dude because i took all his money I, I basically he had like 12 13k i just took it all in one hand he all tanked him out he uh, well he said all in so that's on him man <laughs> yeah i mean the way i played it though you would think i i, I either have like um no, you know what? The turn, I think the turn was like a queen or something. He, he, he probably thought I just had it uh, over paired to the board at first because the board was like all low bullshit cards. And for the most part, if you're calling that kind of bet pre flop, that shouldn't hit your range. Like it should just be like nothing, right? And cause you're like, okay, it, it, me, I would never have done that. First off, I would never have flat called out of position. I think it's just an idiotic play. Like you just re raise. That's just all you do, especially since there's other people in the pot. Now, if it was just me, the only person that raised and then um, everyone folded before me and then I raise on a button because I'm, I'm raising a lot in those positions because it's just like I'm in position like it. That's the most valuable thing in poker, having position because you get to make all the reads and you can figure out stuff. It's easier to put people on hand ranges and shit. But, um, you know, there was already two people in the pot. Someone already opened, too. So that's, that, that's another thing. Like someone already opened raised and then I re-raise like you should just you just need to re-raise there you know what i mean especially deep stack like you just need to re-raise because you're out of position you want to you you know but whatever he played like an idiot and um yeah i, I punished him <laughs> <laughs> i punished him dude he was so, so on, uh, <laughs> with these all these new online casinos coming from uh Ad, adam and on the on the what's called the interchain network that they're showing up one or i chain and one from Han, one from What's it called? I want to say Osmosis. They got Fox Bets. No, I didn't know. Or Raccoon Bets. Raccoon, Raccoon Bets, yeah. 
are, are they running the same way? I mean, as far as poker goes, do they play the same? Yeah, I mean, I was just messing around last night. It's just small games, just fucking around, like literally the smallest games. It was oh, like yeah. $5, $15 that you can buy in for just messing around just to check it out. And it was fun, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like they usually do in an online poker. It's usually six, six, uh, table or six player tables. They don't do nine like most casinos do. I usually like to play six because it's faster action, but, um, cause nine, nine, you, you just have a lot. You'll have people, you know, even when you go to live casinos, you'll have like the boomers that sit down. They're like reading the paper and they only play like they're, we just, you know, they're rocks. They only play like top hands. And it's like, it makes no sense when you play yeah. like it. First off, it's so obvious, like what you have. So it's so you're never going to make money unless you're playing against morons because you need to be in there dicing it up. Like it's hard to put me on hands because I'll play anything sometimes. So, you know, like I do anything and I'm not afraid to pretend that I have something when I don't have it, but I'm, I'm coming off as a, a, you know, strong in that particular circumstance. It's not about the cards that I have a lot of times. It's about like what you have and what I perceive you to have and what you'll do with your cards that you have. And it's like, you know what I mean? It's a different game that I play that people, you know, it's just the way it is. And that's just how the game's played. But, um, it's a great game. Fuck. I love poker, dude. It, it'll, yeah, it's, it's a great game, but, um, Awesome. But yeah, online poker is different though. Like, cause one, you don't get to see the people. Two, it, it's way easier to cheat. You know, I always, I'm always suspicious of people cheating. You know, it's like, oh, they're cheating. <laughs> I'm getting ripped off right now. So. So who's cheating? Dealers cheating? The players are well, cheating? Well, the player, it was, I mean, I would assume it would be a little bit easier to cheat online because you can, and now I, I'm sure they have software that can track it. So if you and your friend were always going into the same tables or something, but like, who's to say one time you don't just go, Hey, like, let's meet up on this table. And then you're just sharing hands. And like, you know what I mean? If I, okay. even if I know you fold any card, because like when I put people on ranges of cards and like, sometimes it's because I have a certain card in my hand that it, it already takes the probability of you not having that particular hand range because it doesn't make sense. So it's like, oh, yeah, he wouldn't, you know, you're, it's all about eliminating and, and doing probably, it's all basically probabilities if you're trying to play smart, oh, yeah. right? So if you tell me and I know, oh, you folded like, even if it's bullshit cards, like two eight, and I know one of them is a, is a club and there's a, there's a club draw on the board. It's like, maybe I, I would already take that into consideration. That doesn't mean it's a foolproof, but I already know it's like, okay, well there's one out of the deck. There's only 13 of them. There's two on the board. Does this dude have the other two? And then uh, there's only these many left. So even if he's chasing it, there's only this problem. Like it's all math, dude. And uh yeah. See how I think about poker. A lot of people when they play, they're just trying to dick off like, Oh yeah. And that's the, <laughs> that's why I would make a lot of money doing it. <laughs> you win. Yeah. That's where you have an advantage yeah. over people, man. Yeah. All right, it's seven. I gotta get breakfast going. Get out of here. Haas, good talking to you, man. Yeah, man. Uh, let me let me know if you ever need anything. I'll be around, dude. I'm always around. So good, good talking to you. Um, yeah, man. We got to meet up sometime, dude. If you ever you ever gonna go to any conferences ever? Someday. Just gotta get time off work. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, brother. Nah, we'll definitely get together sooner or later. I I, I haven't been out to the West Coast in forever. I might be out. In uh, Salt Lake in September, so maybe. <laughs> All right, man. You have a All good right, one. talk to you later, John. Take care, bro. Take care. What up, everyone? Homestead, you must be with the kiddos, man. You usually come up and bullshit about whatever, so I respect it. You probably, I mean, the last time you had your kids at, uh, what was it? The, oh, damn, what was it? The park or some shit. <laughs> if you want to come up, anyone wants to come up, feel free. I'm just shooting the shit, man. All is well. Happy Friday. Good vibes. Markets, whatever. It looks like it's has a little bit of a pulse today. I've been checked out. Uh, yeah, man. It's been sad, dude. Like, to be honest with you, I've been in the space for four years now, I think ish. And seems like a lot of people are just exhausted. <laughs> so I hope everyone's doing all right. I get it to summertime, touch grass and all that shit too. So I get why people aren't as, as enthusiastic, but looks like we have a little bit of a pulse today, actually. So it's a good sign. Everything looks green. So good shit. But, uh, for anyone out there that weren't here before, like my, my convictions in right now is trying not to lose money. And I think the clear winners because of just like when the market nukes, 
who, who nukes less when the market pumps, who's usually pumping more. And, uh, clearly Solana, uh, Tawn, clear. Um, and then meme coins, dude, like you can hate them all you want, but Pepe is a, it's just a beta on Ethereum. So if you're long on Ethereum or you think Ethereum's, you know, going to get a 10 K or something, then pretty much Pepe is probably going to outperform it. Render, clear winner with clear winner. Falcoins, probably clear winner. Maker, winner. Um, injective, it's like, it's a winner, but like, I don't know if it runs as good as maybe some other ones do. I don't know. Well, time's to be told, but I don't sell my injective. Uh, who else? Probably not coin because of it's the, the meme over on Tawn again in beta. Other than that, like going through the list, maybe, um, Mantra OM because of its RWA play, uh, potentially e-gold because it's beat up helium winner. Uh, Akash, probably a winner. I, I don't sell any, but I haven't been adding more either at these, right, right at these numbers. You know, MEW cat, <laughs> the dog's world's a winner. Uh, then after that, I kind of just been chilling, bro. Like that's kind of how I am right now. Everything else, like there are some winners, obviously, but it's just so hard to pick. I just, the ones that I do have below, like the top 100, I just keep compounding. I haven't been really throwing any dry paint at it that's just kind of my style it's like this market's been goofy it's been ranges you know it's like you can scalp the it goes up to where it's that now then it goes down blah 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 so if you're you have the mental capacity to deal with it then you could probably make a little money here and there but uh, someone told me happy oak and dow which is supposed to be it's a low number right now like 857 someone told me that i respect in the game it's on Arbitron, so it's like the borrowing, lending, and all that for them. I don't know. I I haven't bought it yet, but it's something that's on my radar. <clears throat> They're convinced. I don't know. So we'll see. But those are my clear winners, man. Like I just think that uh, those are the winners, like for sure winners. As long as the you know we don't the whole market doesn't nuke and Kamala Harris doesn't blow the world up if she wins. But um, yeah, that's kind of kind of my vibe. Now I just go on timetables. I think. I think we're good until Halloween and then I'm going to reevaluate based off of kind of like the, the, the political spectrum and things like that. But I think we're good right now, to be honest with you. That's just kind of been my vibe. Like I did, I loaded, I had a little bit of anxiety. I loaded most of my stables into the market. I bought, I bought render at like 666, I think it was or somewhere around there. And then it just nuked down to like, uh, five, was it in 593? And I was like, come on, man. Like I was, I, I, it's not that it went down. It was more that I wish I got it at 593, <laughs> you know, and now it's back up over, it's at 687. So I'm like, I'm at 16% today. It's a clear winner. Can't fight against it, man. This is how I look at it. Can't, can't fight against it. It's a winner. So yeah, I mean that's kind of my strategy right now is not to lose money. Those are the ones that I'm I'm good on. I think there's other ones, obviously, you know, there's they're out there, but I just don't have the mental capacity to be charting them and looking and all that shit. I own a bunch of different stuff, but for me to like sit there and, and tell you, you know, with conviction, it's just hard to do right now. Well, anyone else want to come up with, I've been rambling for about an hour. I, I was actually going to get some more caffeine in me and some water and, uh, yeah, feel free to come up. If not, I'll probably cut it short because it's not as fun rambling to myself. So, uh, let's see what else here we got. See some Cosmos people. I, I hope you all still have a pulse. I know it's been a little bit rough, rough around the edges. And another thing too, why, uh, I think it's not good to like overlook meme coins because the word utility, right? Like everyone's like, Oh, we want this utilities, but people are fed up because sadly a lot of these proof of stake chains are highly inflationary. And no matter what, even if it's a good, good project, good, everything else, it's really hard because it's like always, it's like an airdrop. You're always getting airdrops and people sell their airdrops. So it's like always sell pressure. So the, the, thing that has gravitated a lot of people towards meme coins is generally the entire supply is out there. It's all, it's all, it's all out there, you know, like there's no, there's no more inflation. So it is what it is. 
And then for the most part, it's usually dictated what the, what the market wants to do. Now, is there probably insiders? Absolutely. It'd be naive to think that there's not some insider movements, but, um, yeah, it's all out there. And as long as the meme coin doesn't have, you know, like two or three folders that own like all the supply, then it's just like what people look into. And then some of them are just, it's the culture of that chain. So it's just inevitable. Like it's just inevitable. So. You know, I used to have this conception of, oh, like, meme coins are stupid, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, it is what it is. You can't fight gravity, man. It just happens. So, you know, there, there's that, too. So that's that's kind of me, man. Like, that's kind of my my uh thing. And I've talked to a lot of people with the same kind of thoughts about that, that I respect, that um, that have way more money than I do, that are big. And that's kind of the shit that they're talking about is the same loons that I just mentioned. So... Take that info with it, if you will, you know, not financial advice, but that's kind of what I'm doing right now because other stuff after that, man, I don't know. I'm not convinced, you know, like last cycle, you could have just shut your eyes and clicked a button and the those tokens would have went on. But I'm not convinced this time around. I don't know. I'm just not. So that's just how I am. Let's see, we got a couple comments. Yeah, man, don't feel bad. The person, Don, uh, you said you couldn't come up and hang out. It's all good, bro. I'm about to get my day started with work. Anyhow, I got a lot of shit I got to get done today. So I just was rambling for an hour. I'm always doing these at this time as long as I'm not traveling. So feel free, man. Um, I'm all, you can always stop up if you're working on any sort of project. If, um, you just want to shill shit, I don't care, man. It's just, it's free. You can say whatever you want. There's no judgment here. I don't care. So anyways, man, I appreciate everyone. Thank you for stopping by and listening to me ramble. John, that had to go. It was nice having him come up. But, uh, yeah, uh, maybe I'll have it more structured next time. I'm just kind of winging these. But take care, everyone. Have a good rest of your Friday. Good weekend. Cheers, everyone. Take care.